And so we went, and again, we were just thinking that we'd be lucky to do recon and maybe find a place to do something. Well, it turns out that uh, Grassroots United is uh, 10 minutes from the airport, and they have a little compound, and they provided us with a place to do it. So we show up there, and within an hour of landing, we're pounding tires. And one thing led to another, and we saw that we're going to get something done here. So we sent Marita out to get more tires, and she then the next day brought 40 people from one of the tent camps, and they ranged in age from 4 to 50. We ended up saying, oh my God, we might even get a building going here. So I uh, bought some materials down there, some rebar and some cement. Marita took a couple of dozen of the kids and went out within a half a mile of the compound and gathered all the plastic bottles that we needed. And we did a simplified version of our hut design with a door and a window and a ferro cement vaulted roof that is very lightweight amount of cement, but lots of steel. So this is a very earthquake resistant design here and hurricane resistant. The bottom line is we, we were going for a recon and in four and a half days, due to just uh, synchronicity and connections working out and so on, we ended up with a 12 foot diameter building built. Another interesting point was I just got my arm out of a cast from rotator cuff surgery. I was crippled, I couldn't do much. And Brian and Mike got the shits and uh, vomiting to the point of almost dying. So yeah, we were in dire straits and this still happened. Yeah. The reason it happened was the Haitians. They could do every aspect of it. They could pound the tires, they could lay the bottles. They did it all, learned it all, and were clear that this can be replicated. So far, we were we nosed around down there a little bit. There's lots of tents, there's some container things, but really there's nothing for the people yet. This is something the people can get their hands into. They can be building houses for themselves and each other and so on. I mean, this can really uh, be way beyond just shelter. It can be a sort of a, uh, an economic base or a currency for Haiti itself. So everybody that gave us anywhere from 10 to 100 bucks, thank you very much. Here's how it was used. We got a little over $7,000 in donations. And we fronted another three or so grand. We, we bought tickets for four people. We got shots for four people. And uh, we bought materials. And we bought them lunch every day that they worked for us. There were no fees, no salaries, no wages. We are talking direct use of money. Money goes straight to a building in Haiti and transportation to get there. Nothing goes through any bureaucratic uh, salaries and commissions. You know, how do you track your $500 that you donated through some agency or whatever? You know, it just goes and you, you, get, a, you get a little postcard or something. This, you've got a picture of where your money went, every dollar of it. And uh, if we didn't raise any more money, I'm just going to the bank and get it. Uh, I'll borrow it, I'll finance it. Because now we're going to go back down mid-October and do a finishing hit on this thing and make it collect its own water, contain and treat its own sewage with a little outdoor courtyard and a flush toilet and uh, have its own power system. With the most important part is Haitians from the tent camps helping us and learning. You may as well call this building a demonstration unit because what they're going to do is bring people in to this compound and show it to them. And of course, the ones that got to work on it are going to be talking about how to do it and probably starting to do it once yeah. they can get a place. Where we'll go next for land will be where it can be for the people. We're even thinking of like, can we tear down a few tents in Tent City and throw up some of these? Mm -hmm. If we got a windfall of funding, we would start a little village and then we'd just, we'd just go back and forth to Haiti for the next few years. We'd start an Earthship Academy. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of people down there living 12 in a tent. There's no end in sight to what we can do if we get the money. The thing is, this, in four and a half days, this hit to the very heart of the people that are living in the tent cities and it brought them out and they participated in this and this was a real thing, not a hypothetical thing. We were working with them, they were working with us. We weren't 
a bunch of whiteies going down there and making something that we wouldn't live in ourselves, but trying to give them some charity. I would love to live in the building that we built down there. I love that little building. And so we, we got together eyeball to eyeball with the Haitian people, with no bureaucrats or politicians in between us. And that is the key. We're sharing what we've learned over 40 years, and they're giving us a lot of light back. From the little kids to the older people, they got inspired by this. They got lit up by this. And we got lit up by the fact that they got lit up. It was, it was an outrageous situation. last day when they were waiting in line to hold our hands and saying things like, if I have to die to get our ships to Haiti, then I'm, I'm ready to die right now. And may God make you live a lot longer so that you can continue doing this. You know, not one of us were dry eyed. Michael, wants to give you a kiss. <laughs> I'm gonna get dirty. Okay. Thank you. Merci. Everybody that donated time, uh, guidance, coordination, or money, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, we're gonna go back and do more. Just a quick walkthrough of what we did for this project was um, we laid out a 12 foot diameter circle and pounded up seven courses of tires and put one of our bottle formed bond beams on top of that and came out of that with a steel bird cage that uh, we plaster and turn into a dome. Uh, we then did another steel bird cage a couple of feet above that one and that gave us a cavity to put in insulation. It was torn up cardboard and styrofoam put in rice bags and then put in a plastic bag. We did another rebar shape to keep the rain out but allow ventilation at all times and there we had a six foot diameter cistern veneered with bottles laid in cement to make it last forever and then a five foot diameter shower and a five foot diameter toilet. It was all just a series of shapes made from materials that we found in Port-au-Prince in addition to concrete and rebar. All right, so at the Haiti building when it rains, the main dome collects water that runs through gutters over an entry arch to the cistern. When you want to take a shower, you turn on a valve at the bottom of the cistern and you fill a five gallon bucket. And then that water drains simply through the floor of the shower into a plastic lined hole that then overflows into a gray water botanical cell. That water is feeding the plants in the botanical cell. And also you fill a bucket with that used gray water to bucket flush your toilet with. The tank in this case is a stack of tires that contains the solids. As they break down, they seep out between the tires and under the tires. Then when the liquids reach a certain level, they overflow into the Blackwater Botanical Cell. And then that overflows, but it rarely does. But just in case, it went outside to another cell where at the end of the line there, you uh, also are growing plants and vegetables. The combined material cost of everything involved in the Haiti building was $4,000. The solar electric system is a 30 watt flexible panel that charges a very small battery in a little red toolbox that had two LED lights mounted. Uh, it also contains a 150 watt inverter to charge your cell phone or whatever. So the, the building, just the construction of it was cleaning up the streets. We used 10,000 plastic bottles, close to 100 tires that offer thermal mass to keep you cool. 15 to 20 bags stuffed full with styrofoam takeout boxes. We used rubble in our planters. 
We pounded tires with rubble. Uh, the tire and rubble combined is two totally prevalent piles of garbage in Port-au-Prince, and you take the two and you create a wall that can withstand uh, an earthquake. It's resistant of hurricanes due to the dome shape. The Haitians really built the building with us just kind of massaging it and directing it. They're just really motivated to uh, make their country better. This was a very inspiring situation. Uh, these people have been through uh, just horrors that you know most of most of us can't even imagine. It makes you just have instant respect for these people that have been through this. Not to like pry into, into your life too much, but I, I, I was wondering what the day of the earthquake was like for you. What were you doing? You know, where were you? Um, that that kind of thing. With the lack of money, so bad, we don't have enough. Et puis, moi, je suis tremblé. Et là, ça me saisit. Je suis couru à aller dans la radio Nouvelle Génération pour être capable de dire ça pour les gens qui sont venus à Je suis aidé à retirer les gens. Et bien, c'est comme ça que tout le monde est mort dans la bataille. Et là, je suis aidé à gens. C'est comme ça que je suis allé à la maison. Plus de trois camions de gens qui sont pleins. Ils ont été jetés dans tout. Quand même, je suis après ces saisissements, ces saisissements qui font que les mourir. Et là, ça n'est pas capable de jouer de parce que tout le monde est occupé, nous sommes obligés d'enterrer le 21 janvier. C'est le fait que tu as gagné un monsieur qui est en face moi qui t'a couru devant moi. Mais tu as un bloc qui sortit en l'air, qui est tombé, qui est retiré. Ça t'a vraiment fait mal lorsque la terre a la plongée, mais bon, moi, je ne suis même pas capable de faire un coup. C'est le fait que je regarde une série de gens qui mourent, écrasés, des gens qui. Ça vraiment terrible pour moi. C'était Sammy's house. Et puis, nous avons des gens qui ont pleuré, qui ont pour la fête de la fête fini. Parce que quand on est rentré dans le temps, on a coupé nos exemples des jeunes garçons qui pouvaient violence, violence sexuelle. Et voix de fait tout ça. Je suis crié parce que je ne pas de cas vivre encore. Et vous entendez seulement des sons de sound. Les gens streaming everywhere. Et j'ai juste pris ma shirt off et j'ai mis ça sur ma mère. J'ai essayé de hide her face, mais ce n'était pas suffisant. J'ai vu les legs. Straight away after. Legs. Arms. Two nieces of mine was inside, including my brother. Um, my nieces died. It was so, so bad. Only crying the night, we spent the night only crying. Two beautiful babies, and then, yeah. Ça t'a vraiment fait mal. It really hurt me. For everybody who died. Mais nous quoi ces constructions nous ont été mal faites. But we believe that it was our own construction that wasn't done well. Et nous besoin adapter avec l'autre système de construction pour tout le monde soit pas mourir. So we need to adapt to a new type of construction so this doesn't happen again. They have been through hell. And this Earthship project is giving them uh, hope, and it's it's from hope that something can happen. Mais ces staff Earthship là qui t'es venu travailler avec moi, qui t'es bon formation ça, et que mon content et que qui t'es venu bon courage. You helped us build this Earthship, working for free, but we told the world about your work and they gave us money to pay you. So we're giving yeah. you a certificate and pay. Give him the money. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Fabri pour un chef.
taken a place a very proud and 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 light people uh, and we I think this is a perfect formula for making a shot heard around the world I don't really know exactly guys if you really really understand that huge favor that you give us and then you you teach people how to build an airship my own water, my own electricity, my own food, <clears throat> and build the house with less money. This is all we need. And then now we can share it. it it's a treasure that the airship crew come here in Haiti to give, it to, to give us. I always pensé to map that I'm really I'm problem to Okay, merci. Okay. I love you. <laughs> okay. And they have everything stacked up against them. And I think, you know, our crew, that had a big impact on our crew. You know? But there's a lot of positive people that want to that want to go for it. We've worked with them on a few more projects, and then they have a crew that's trained and can go and, and do it on their own. And I mean, that is the absolute goal. Have you met your expectations, or where where are you now in relationship to your expectations? No, vision, reality vision. objectif moi. And the, my objective is. C'est pour Haiti changer. Même si moi même moi vivre. Même à travailler pour ça, pour l'autre génération capable. Même we'll si c'est impossible, mais n'est capable de changer. Even if it's impossible, it's possible. On croit en premier. Mike, on croit en deuxième. And I think you're second. Ce qui veut dire situation du vrai. The situation is hard. Mais pas découragé. Don't be discouraged. Non, non, non. 
All of the real people that have given $5 to $500 and more, they are part of the Earthship Army that is making this happen. We have to be totally thankful and give them the credit for being with us there in spirit and in their donations. Mission accomplished. Sir. We are blown away by what we were able to do with your help and we are not going to stop. Hope you don't either. Et moi merci tout le monde qui peut qui pas con aider mais qui peut aider les au fin de la vidéo ça. Que bon Dieu bénisse. Alors que bon Dieu bénisse nous tous en abondance. Merci. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, boy. <laughs> <laughs>